Hi Matrix and welcome to this finance video on the number of time periods brought to you by the answer series. Be sure to pause at any point along the way if you feel the need. In the past we've been able to calculate the number of time periods working with the simple growth or decay formulae. Let's refresh our memory now by looking at this first example. Here P is 500, A is 750 and I is 5%. Using the simple increase formula, by substituting our values into this formula, we are able to solve the straightforward linear equation, getting an answer of n equals 10 for the number of time periods. The process for simple growth and decay is straightforward, but let's have a look now at when growth is compounded. When using the compound method, it may be necessary to use logs to solve for n. Let's first make sure we are comfortable with applying the log definition. Here we have, in exponential form, base a to the power n equals the number b, and this converts to log form n equaling log base a of b. You'll feel so much more confident with these sums if you make sure your understanding and fluency in logs is solid. Here are three examples to illustrate the application of the log definition. We recommend here that you practice these calculations on your calculators to be totally familiar with how your particular calculator works. You will see here the first step in each example given is converting from exponential form to log form. In other words, applying the log definition. Maybe pause the video here to practice these examples and make sure you're on track. This third answer comes out with a negative value for n. It is fully possible for an exponent to be a negative, but because here we are calculating the number of time periods, n is not likely to be negative as we can't work in negative time. Now that we've checked our ability to manipulate logs, let's have a look at this next example. The information is the same as the first example we did, except now it is asking you to use the compounding growth formula. Substituting into the various parameters, our equation simplifies to bracket 1,05 to the n equals 1,5. It is necessary here to apply the log definition in order to solve for n. Remember we have the base to the power equals the number. Therefore we have the power, in this case n, equaling log base 1,05 of the number 1,5. And this gives us an answer of approximately 8,31 for n. This is smaller than our answer of 10 when we calculated n previously using simple increase. And this tells you that it will get to 750 sooner using compound increase, taking 8,31 time periods as opposed to 10. In worked example number 3, we are given that taxis depreciate by 15% per annum. Joe has a new taxi costing 350,000 Rand and we are asked to calculate how long it will take for this taxi to reduce to a value of less than 200,000 Rand. The context of the question is a guide for whether to use simple or compound growth or decay. If neither simple nor compound is mentioned, compounding growth or decay can be assumed. So here we will use the compounding formula for depreciation. Substitute the values from the information, the original value, the reduced value in the future, the percent per year, and note that we are solving for n. The 0.85 is from this bracket, 1 minus 0.15. And this value here we get from dividing 200,000 by 350,000. The calculator is able to hold this answer which helps for not rounding off mid-calculation. When we then apply the log definition to convert from exponential form to log form, we need to use the answer button which will activate the most recent answer calculated and so to calculate n we press log 0.85 and the button ANS to get our answer for n. At this point it is useful to go back to your question and be reminded exactly what they have asked. 
The answer we got for N is telling us exactly when the taxi will be worth 200,000 Rand. This question, however, wants to know when it will be less than 200,000 Rand. So we'll say at the end of four years, Joe's taxi will have a value of less than 200,000 Rand. Let's look now at example four. We'll have a read through first and then slow down to see what we are given and what we have been asked to calculate. So a read through first. It is determined that the number of deaths from a virus in a certain region is increasing by 8% per day. Calculate how long it will take for there to be a million deaths per day from the date when 300 deaths are recorded. So let's have a look at the detail. It says that a number of deaths from a virus increases by 8% per day. We have been asked to calculate how long it will take for there to be a million deaths per day from when 300 deaths are recorded. We've given you the opportunity here to give this one a try on your own. So pause the video here and give some thought to what to do and hopefully even give it a try before moving on to see the solution. Let's have a look now at the solution with a few tips along the way. When we have to work with large numbers such as a million, it is common to make a typing error on the calculator. So a way to eliminate this possibility is by typing 10 to the power 6, which can be safer. Then looking at the question, did you correctly select the compound increase formula for this question? Now if we look at the substituting, the 1, 0, 8 is the 1 plus 8% per day. The million divided by 300 gives us this number here. And again, we carry the full answer we get here in the final calculation by pressing the answer button when we need it in the log calculation. We use the log definition to solve for n. And here we get an answer of approximately 105,4 days. Now check your question for what they are asking you to find. In this question they have asked us to calculate how long it will take and so the value for n is the final answer. An interpretation of this answer is that in about three and a half months the number of deaths per day will increase from 300 to a million at an 8% per day increase rate. It is useful to get into the habit of doing a quick interpretation of your final answer as this helps to see if your answer makes sense with the information given. Example 5 says determine how long it will take for a lump sum investment of 20,000 Rand to grow to 45,000 Rand in an account earning interest at 7,5% per annum compounded monthly. This is a question about an investment and it tells us that interest is compounded monthly. Have a look at the information given and pause the video here to give the solution a try on your own first before moving on. You will see here that we use the memory on the calculator in this first step for the compounding factor. Remember the 7,5% is compounded monthly, therefore the answer for n will be in months. This part of the calculation is helpful to do separately because otherwise the log calculation gets complicated with this compounding factor being the base. We can write this first step like this and from then on use A in our written answer. For those who would like to see this from the very beginning or in full, here is the compound increase formula and here is the substitution. If you would prefer to write it out in full instead of using A, we still recommend you use the calculator memory to simplify the calculation. In the next step, 45,000 divided by 20,000 gives us the 2,25. And so to solve for n, we use logs. n equals log base a, which is the compounding factor, of 2,25. And we get an answer of 130,1538, etc. When we check the question to remind ourselves exactly what they were asking, we see they want to know how long it will take the investment to grow to 45,000 Rand. In other words, getting an answer of 130 comma something tells us that it takes longer than 130 months to reach the 45,000 Rand, which means we must round up to 131 months as our final answer. And looking at one more example, 
Example 6 tells us that vehicles typically depreciate by 12% per annum on a reducing balance and it asks us to calculate how long it will take for a vehicle to be worth half of its purchase price. Pause the video here and give this question a go. Let's go and have a look now at the solution. If you have a look at the first step here, you will see that we have used P as the original value. Using X would have also been correct. Alternatively, if you had used X for A's value, then P, the original purchase price, would have needed to be 2X, as the purchase price will have been double the depreciated value. We're told that the value is depreciating by 12%, so 1 minus 0, 0,12 gives us the 0, 0,88. And dividing our depreciated value by our original purchase price, we will get 0, 0,5 no matter which method you have used. Therefore, n, using logs, is log base 0, 0,88 of 0, 0,5. And this gives us an answer of 5,42227, etc. Your answer here for when the vehicle will be worth half its purchase price can be, therefore, after six years. If they had wanted a more accurate answer, they would have asked something like, give your answer to two decimal places, or something to that effect. Often it is more about getting a feel of how long something will take. As we come to the end of this video, just a reminder that you can find some more of these types of questions in our Grade 12 Maths Turn 1 Study Guide, which we recommend you work through to apply what you have learned. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you are starting to feel more confident and comfortable with tackling finance questions. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.